Dr. Jaffe, you frequently refer to the um, differences between grasses and grains. Can you talk a little bit about that and why you recommend grasses over grains? Um, yes, uh, my approach to uh, restorative digestion, restorative nutrition, is to recommend easy to digest grasses rather than hard to digest grains. Well, what's the difference between a grain and a grass? And then there's another word called a seed. And it turns out, it's a, when you go online, as I did last night, to see what other people were saying, to make sure that I was in agreement with you know, the facts, um, there was a great deal of confusion. For example, corn, which I do not recommend unless you grow it yourself, uh, and maize, which is a form of corn that is widely used throughout the world. Corn, depending on how you look at it, is a seed. It's described as a seed. Why? Because you can take the dried kernel and put it in the ground and grow it. It's described as a grain. It's described as a grass. Now, botanically, and I'm just going to limit my comments to botanical um, uh, nomenclature. Botanically, corn is a grass. Look at how it grows. It looks kind of like a grass. I don't recommend corn because it's almost all either GMO um, manipulated or it's been hybridized um, to decrease the protein and increase the sugar, the sweetness of the corn, the fructose, etc. So uh, I'm going to say at the end of the discussion, let's not uh, have much corn in our diet unless you grow it yourself because roasted whole fresh corn, freshly picked or freshly uh, put into uh, boiling water for just a few minutes, that to me is a delightful um, meal. Now, grains by definition are glutinous. Grains by definition will make bread-like or cake-like products. By definition, if you have the sticky substance called gluten of any kind, you're a grain. If you're gluten-free, you're a grass. Now, examples of grains, wheat, triticale, camet, spelt, teff, rye, oats, rice. Examples of grasses, buckwheat, wild rice, which is a grass, not a grain, millet, quinoa, farro, and I put barley as a grass, not a grain. Some people put it as a grain, not a grass. That's a choice. I've already said that I think corn should be limited in our diet because of the way in which it's been hybridized and manipulated. Legumes are different. That would be lentils that I recommend, um, but soy that I stay away from. Beans are highly recommended. There's a wide variety of them. We recommend um, basically uh, soaking them in cold water overnight uh, and then cooking them into something nutritious, delicious, and it turns out to be digestively easy to digest, assimilate, and eliminate, which is the goal uh, of restorative digestion. And then you have seeds and nuts, which are generally perfect snacks as long as you take them in small or modest portions. So grains, they stick together. You can make loaves and, and breads and cakes and things out of them. They're hard to digest. So if you're rebuilding your digestion, you want to stay away from grains and you want to have a diet rich in grasses. Buckwheat, what uh, in uh, Yiddish is known as kasha varnishkis, which means buckwheat and onions. Very cheap. If you throw in a little salt and pepper, delicious uh, and nutritious, easy to digest. Wild rice turns out to be a grass, not a grain. Uh, there are also some exotic rices, I understand, that are um, uh, grasses, not grains. But the standard basmati rice, uh, brown rice, uh, polished rice, all of those contain a rice gluten, and therefore they're grains. Um, so. That's the distinction that I think functionally as a nutritionalist, uh, biochemist, uh, as an agronomist, so as someone who studies the 
the botanical differentiations. I think all of that is clear. If you go online, even the Department of Agriculture database, in my opinion, and I checked with Jim Duke about this and he agrees, whoever wrote that didn't know what they were writing about because they confuse grains and grasses and seeds. So it's hard to get the facts. The facts are that grains are harder to digest and I think should be avoided for the time that you're rebuilding the efficiency or effectiveness of your digestion. And I will put in as a footnote that cow's milk I would avoid, whereas sheep and goat's milk or cheeses that come from them or yogurts that come from them, I'm agnostic about. I think that's a choice. The reason I don't recommend uh, cow dairy products uh, is partly because uh, of regard for the cows, but more importantly, cow's milk is a fat-rich, protein-rich material that has a standard of identity, according to the USDA, and um, is designed for a, a calf that's going to put on 50 pounds a day. Really? Well, calves grow up pretty quickly, it turns out, and so Cow's milk is really designed for a different species, and this is both a philosophical as well as a practical point. Humans are the only species on the planet that takes a weaning food from another species as part of its staple diet. Now, in the Orient, there's very little uh, milk uh, consumed, very little cow dairy uh, in the Orient. Whereas in Europe, in North America, in Latin America, uh, there are places where if you say uh, no leche, no milk, uh, they don't, they're not sure they can even eat without having some form of milk on a regular basis. So uh, the overall point is you want easy to digest grasses, not harder to digest grains. You want easy to digest sheep and goats uh, dairy products, not cow dairy products that are harder to digest. And from my point of view, really should be with the other species. And if I was totally consistent, I guess I would say uh, you should avoid the goat and sheep dairy products because they are also other species. Although it turns out the composition of that milk is closer to human milk. And so a little bit of sheep cheese, a little bit of goat yogurt or something like that. Um, and, and I won't object, uh, but I won't be enthusiastic in, in endorsing. 